going to discuss EB1 green card category of you being asked to judge the work of others either in a panel or individual how i qualified for EB1B green card at the at the time of filing my I140 petition hey guys welcome back to the channel meet praneet in today's video we are going to discuss EB1 green card categories and what are the criteria that you need to fulfill to file an EB1. So let's jump into this video right away. EB1 green card is also known as extraordinary ability or first preference green card category. There are three subcategories, EB1A, EB1B and EB1C. EB1A is reserved for individuals who demonstrate extraordinary ability in the field of art, science, education, business or athletics. EB1B stands for outstanding professors or researchers and is reserved for individuals who have who have shown international recognition for their outstanding achievements in a particular academic field. And EB1C is reserved for multinational executives. Let's start with the criteria set for EB1A and EB1B. So there are 10 criteria that USCIS has set for an individual to fulfill for qualifying in EB1A and B. Now let's go through them one by one. The very first criteria is evidence of receipt of national or international award. Now this can be uh, any national award that you have got in your home country or an international award that you have won for some of your work and you can use those awards as, a cred as an evidence to fulfill this criteria. Second criteria is evidence of uh, membership and associations in the field demanding outstanding achievements. Now this can be something for example let's say in my field uh, bioinformatics in bioinformatics there is a, a, a association or a society called ISCB which is International Society of Computational Biology or in your field it could be let's say IEEE which, which is for the engineers right but the, to fulfill this criteria it should not be a paid membership. It should be when the society or the association has taken your CV, has reviewed it and has reviewed your qualifications, your achievements, and then invite you as a member uh, in, the, in the society or in the association. Now, if that is the way you have, uh, uh, be, you have become a member of this society or, a, or association, then you can submit that as an evidence to fulfill this criteria. The third criteria is evidence of published material about you in a professional, or a major trade publications or major media. If you have articles written about you in a professional media or uh, let's say in publications, then you can fulfill this criteria. Some lawyers or immigration attorneys recommend that you can even use your uh, papers of, or like reviews written about your work. Or if you have information or something is published about your work in major media, that could also be used. But I would say that you should consult an immigration lawyer before fulfilling this criteria. Fourth criteria is evidence of you being asked to judge the work of others either in a panel or individually. Now this is something can be achieved if you if you have been publishing papers in your research about your research in the research in your research field and then you can request the, uh, the journals that you are interested in peer reviewing and you have the enough experience and uh, uh, knowledge to do so. And let's say if you're given a chance to peer review you can well, and once you have completed the peer review successfully, you can ask the editor for a thank you note or an acknowledgement letter and then you can use those as a evidence to fulfill this criteria. The fifth criteria is evidence of your original contributions, major significance in your field. Now, the word field is very important. If you are in, in for, for example, in my case, I am from the field of computational biology or bioinformatics. In your case, you could be in computer science or let's say electrical engineering or whatnot. So to fulfill this, you have to be specific about the evidence that you show. The evidence that you're showing should clearly sh showcase that your work has been of major significance in your field. And let's say it has led to a scientific advancement or it has led to a technical advancement or it could be, let's say, a patent that you filed that has been a novel uh, thing that you have developed in the field. Now, those could be used to fulfill this criteria. Sixth criteria is evidence of scholarship, evidence of, sorry, authorship of scholarly articles 
in uh, professional or major trade articles or major media. Now this can be a list of all the papers like research papers that you have published all the book chapters that you have written or even the books that you have written and you can use all this form of evidence as to support or to fulfill this criteria. Seventh is evidence that your work has been displayed in artistic exhibitions or showcases. Now this I think most probably would be referring to the people who are in the field of art. So if you have a photographer, a photographic skill, or let's say you have photographs, or let's say your art has been displayed in exhibitions across the world, or nationally, or it has been recognized nationally or internationally, then that can be used as an evidence to fulfill this criteria. The eighth criteria is evidence of your performance of a leading or a critical role in a distinguished organization. Now, if you are in a role where you are making critical decisions or you are leading a team uh, which is uh, doing some work uh, in your field, like leading to some advancement in your field, that could be uh, used as an evidence to fulfill this criteria. Uh, I think the other way you can fulfill is if you're a scientific advisor in, a, in an organization and then that maybe that role could also be used to fulfill. But I would suggest that you should talk to an immigration lawyer before uh, fulfilling this criteria or at least get your evidence checked by an immigration lawyer before fulfilling this criteria. Ninth criteria or the requirement is evidence that you command a high salary compared to others in a field. Now I think this is a little tricky to prove uh, but if you have access to the median salary range in your field and if you if you show that your salary is way higher than the people who uh, uh, average salary of the other uh, people or the other uh, peers that you that are in your field, then maybe you can fulfill this criteria. But uh, I think it's it's a little difficult to fulfill this uh, criteria. Finally, the last one is evidence of your commercial success in performing arts. Now, if you are in performing arts and you have uh, let, let's say done shows across the world or in your con home country, and if you have receipt of that, then you can show that as an evidence. Uh, for for fulfilling this criteria and it could be let's say if you're in a dance group or let's say you you have some instrument that you play it could be all those performing arts uh, section that you fall in so again consult an immigration lawyer before fulfilling these criteria now let's discuss how many of these criteria you need to fulfill for eb1a or eb1b for EB1A, you need to have at least or need to fulfill at least three out of the 10 criteria that we just discussed. Or if you have a one time achievement, for example, if you have an Oscar or you have a Pulitzer Prize or an Olympic medal, then you can you don't need to fulfill the other three criteria. Along with this, you should also show an interest to continue working in the field of your expertise. Also for EB1A, there is no offer of employment needed. For EB1B, you need to fulfill two out of the 10 criteria we discussed. Along with this, you should have at least three years of research experience and you should have an offer of employment from an US employer. If your US employer is a private employer, then they should have at least full time, three full time researchers. And if you're entering United States on an employment, then you should be coming on a tenure track or a similar research position. Now let's discuss the criteria for EB1C. For EB1C, there are three main criteria. One is that you must have been employed for at least an year before coming to United States and that should be in preceding three years of filing your I-140 immigrant petition. The second is that you should have been employed, you should be employed by a US employer in a managerial or an executive role. And the third is that the US employer that you're working for should be should have been doing business for at least an year as a legal entity and should have a qualifying relationship with the entity that you were previously employed outside of United States. Now, there must be a question in your mind that, okay, I, I am fulfilling all the three criteria for EB1A and the two criteria that are listed for EB1B along with the other requirements, then would my green card be uh, approved? No, the answer is no. 
The reason is USCIS does a two-way analysis. The first is quantitative and the second is qualitative. In the quantitative analysis, they look whether they, they look for the three requirements or the two requirements and are you fulfilling those? And if yes, then they will go into the qualitative phase where they'll decide whether you are in the top of your field. And if according to USCIS, you are in the top of your field and you make, meet all the requirements or the criteria, then your case would be approved. So this is Finally, let's discuss how I qualified for EB-1B green card. At the, at the time of filing my I-140 petition, I had the following profile. I had 20 research publications around 600 citations, that means 600 or more than 600 times my work or my research was used by others in the field uh, or was cited by others in the field. Uh, apart from that, I had five peer review uh, from different journals. And then, find, uh, and then the last one was that I had four expert letters. Now, this is another criteria that you can use for, uh, for your petition. So let's say you're in, in, in a field of computer science and you have five distinguished scientists that you know, but not personally, and you have not worked with them, but you know that they are, they have done outstanding, they have already have outstanding achievements in the field and they are distinguished in your field. Then you can request them for writing a recommendation or expert letter. Now I know this is a little difficult to get because sometimes the other person might say that, oh, well, I don't know you, so why should I write a letter for you? But uh, you have to be sometimes persistent, you have to keep trying, you have to uh, reach as many people you can. And sometimes some people are really, uh, really helpful and they would consider your uh, request. And if they have used your work, especially I would reach out to people who have used or cited your work, then in that case, uh, they can write a letter from their perspective of how your work is important in the field and how they were benefited from their from your work and that way this recommendation letter could also be a good criteria or a, or a evidence that you can present to the USCIS to showcase that you are in the top of your field. I hope you found today's video really very helpful. If yes, then please like, share and subscribe. And also please share it with your friends, family or colleagues. Uh, if, you, if they are also in the same process if, or if they are planning to apply their green card in the EB1 category. Also, please let me know in the comments if you're in the same process or if you have any questions. I would be very happy to know about your journey and also help you with any questions you have. Now, one thing that I would like to say is whatever I say in the video is uh, just my based on my experience, my personal experience. I would also always recommend you to consult an immigration lawyer. Uh, and before before making any move or before filing your petition or start gathering your uh, evidences and uh, apart from that uh, please please show your love and support to the channel and uh, in the next video i will be sharing a success story with you of a friend who recently got his green card in eb1a category so he just got his i140 approved and he is now in the process of filing i485 so I think that would be another great video where you can learn from his experience and how he fulfilled the criteria that were required for EB, successful, EB1, successful EB1A petition. So I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. So till then, stick around and uh, please, again, do like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.